All right, so in the last video, you saw that we have configured circuit breaker in our application architecture. So we have made the internal communication between our services resilient. So whenever our service is down or whenever we are facing a performance issue, we can be sure that we will have some kind of fallback mechanism or even in worst cases we will do a retry and maybe if it, if it takes long time then we will do a timeout of the request right so we'll have some kind of resiliency in our system but how exactly can we track down these issues right so for sure we can have a look at the logs but actually in a production grade application where our where our services can receive thousands of it's not really possible to understand and bug this point of performance problems through logs right because you can have thousands of log entries in our thousands millions of log entries in our system so for this reason there is a design pattern called as distributed tracing which is nothing but it helps us to track the request from the start to the finish right as the name suggests it helps us to trace the request from the start to the finish so that if a request is failed at any point of time we can understand why why it failed and maybe also where it failed so now let's go ahead and understand how we can implement distributed tracing in our project before going ahead and implementing and distributed tracing first let's understand what really is distributed tracing right so imagine our example the user will place an order uh, place an order in our system. So this request will first reach the API gateway, right? And after that API gateway will proxy this request, send this request to the order service and the order service will make a call to the inventory service. So this is our request flow. So to be able to track the request all the way from API gateway to inventory service, we need some kind of mechanism to trace this request, right? So for this reason, we have something called as a trace ID in distributed tracing, right? So the trace ID is nothing but a unique identifier which will identify the request which comes into a system. Along with this trace ID, we also have something called as a span ID. So this span ID is nothing but the number of trips the request is going to take inside our systems, right? We have one trip to API gateway, and another trip to order service. And lastly, we have another trip to inventory service, right? So all these trips, uh, we have an unique identifier for each destination, right? For the API gateway, we'll have a unique identifier called as span one, right? We call it as a span ID. And for order service, we also have another span ID called span two, for example. And for inventory service, we all have, we also have a, another span ID. Right. So a span ID indicates uh, is like a unique identifier for each request inside the, our individual systems. But the trace ID is a unique identifier for the whole request. By using these kinds of mechanism traces and spans, we can trace the whole request lifecycle in our services. And we can also understand if at all a service is responding uh, slowly or like if it is having uh, some performance issues, we can easily identify using the trace ID and the span ID. So now let's go ahead and implement this mechanism in our microservice project, right? So for this, we are going to make use of a project inside a Spring Cloud ecosystem called as Spring Cloud Sleuth. So the Spring Cloud Sleuth, um, actually it's like a distributed uh, tracing framework, which uh, helps us to generate the trace ID and the span ID whenever we receive a request to our microservices. Also need some kind of UI to visualize this information. For this, re for this reason, we have a tool called as Zipkin, which will help us to visualize this information. To get started, I'm going to uh, add the Spring Cloud Starter Sleuth dependencies to our project. So first of all, I'm going to start with the API Gateway project. And in here, I'm going to add the dependency with the uh, group ID as org spring framework dot cloud. And uh, for the artifact ID, I'm going to type in Spring Cloud Starter Sleuth. Right. So this is going to download the Spring Cloud Starter Sleuth dependency. And after that, I'm just going to copy this dependency one more time. And I'm going to type in the artifact ID as Spring Cloud Sleuth Zipkin. Right. So the first dependency will download the Spring Cloud Sleuth dependency. And the, dependent, and the second dependency is going to download the Zipkin library. So I'm going to copy these two dependency information and I'm going to do uh, paste it inside the rest of the projects, right? So I'm going to start with the discovery server.
All right, so, so I've added these dependencies inside all the services. So the next step is to configure the properties, configure the Spring Cloud Sleuth properties in our application, in, in our services. So for that, I'm, again, I'm going to start with the API gateway. So inside the Spring main resources, inside source main resources folder and the application.properties file. First of all, we need to uh, configure the Zipkin properties inside our inside our API Gateway project. But before that, we have to download Zipkin to our machine, right? So, so if you go to the Zipkin.io website uh, under the Quick Start section, I'm going to scroll down uh, to the Docker section, and I'm just going to copy the Docker Run command here, and I'm going to open the terminal and. Uh, paste in and run this command as you can see i already have the zipkin uh, container up and running so you can just run this command and uh, it will start the docker will start the zipkin container on your machine right and make sure that you are exposing this zipkin um, zipkin container on the port 9411 go back to the application.properties inside our api gateway project and in here i'm going to type in spring.zipkin.base url i'm going to type in http localhost 9411 right and after that i'm also going to add another property spring.sleuth dot sampler dot probability as 1.0 so this sampler probability we have set the value as 1.0 that that means we want to send 100 percent of the request which we are receiving to our system to zipkin right we want to uh, start tracing 100 percent of the requests which we are receiving to our system all right so now i'm going to copy this property and paste this exactly into all of the services so i'm going to open the properties file of our discovery server and i'm going to add this also let's add this inside our inventory service our order service and lastly the product service right so that's all we need to do to enable spring uh, spring cloud sleuth to enable distributed tracing in our microservices project. So let's go ahead and test whether the distributed tracing is really working or not. So for this, I'm going to first start off with by starting the discovery server. Let's see if it is able to start up or not without any errors. All right, so you can see that the discovery server is started without any problems. And I think it's able to also connect to Zipkin and now i'm going to start off all the rest of the services all right so if you see the logs so if you observe the logs you can already see that we have some additional information in our logs right for each log entry we have adding some kind of additional information right so first of all we are showing the service name what service we have and we have two blank uh, spots here right so here this is the place where we see the span id as well as the trace id of each request so i'm going to open the postman client and i'm going to first of all make a request to the product service first of all for that i'm just require a new access token for that i'm just going to click on get new access token and click on proceed and then click on use token and then now i'm going to send this request to the product service and here you can see the unique identifiers here right we received this information um, to the product service this request contains a span id as, as well as the trace id now let's go ahead and also place an order in our system so for that i'm going to go to the postman client one more time i'm going to acquire a new access token one more time and then click on so as you remember that we have added a slight delay in our inventory service so for this reason we are uh, not getting the response right away for sure we'll getting we will get a timeout exception inside our order service so because that's good we can actually have a look at how our this timeout exception is going to be handled through the distributed tracing let's open the zipkin ui and visualize this information so i'm going to open my browser and go to localhost 9400 slash zipkin and here you can see the the home page of the zipkin application and here i'm just going to click on run query 
and you can see that it is displaying us the information about the request we have made. You can see that the request has first reached the API gateway and it actually took 19 seconds for this request to be completed and it actually made three stops that's why it has three spans here so if i click on the show information here you can see that first it made a request to api gateway then it made a request to order service right if i click on show all annotations you can see some information about this request you can also see what is the error um, error status of this particular call what is the http method the path of this particular call and we can also see the error message of this particular call which side the order service so if you want to see more than 10 so by default it's uh, showing 10 results right so if you want to see more than 10 results i can click on the settings button and uh, the limit i can set as maybe thousand right and i can click on the run query and now you can see the all the requests um, in the last 15 minutes all right so now you you may get a doubt that are we not able to see the inventory service in this whole call stack right you can only see the api gateway and as well as the order service in this particular trace information and if you check the order service and if you click on the show button for the order service we're able to call this see a call to the inventory service here this is because we are making a call to the inventory service in a different thread right we are using we are making use of a circuit breaker here right so what the circuit breaker will essentially do is it will create a new thread from our order service and it will make a call to the inventory service in that new thread right so if you take this into consideration this is not a same request right this is a different request so from our api gateway to order service we are making a uh, one request and from order service to inventory service this is completely a different request as this is running on a different thread right so that's why we are um, not able to see this inventory service information inside the um, inside the previous trace request right if you want you can try to disable the circuit breaker in our order service so if i open the order service class uh, you can try to disable the circuit breaker but let's try to disable the circuit breaker annotation and let's see what will happen and now if you see the API gateway uh, line and click on the show button you can see all the information here right we can see that the api gateway is making call to order service and the order service is making call to inventory service right so you can see that in the whole call to the order service the inventory service is taking 292 milliseconds and the order service is taking 625 milliseconds and the whole request is taking 637 milliseconds to complete right and uh, you can also have a look at the span ids for each of the services so for the inventory service the span id is 755 starting with 755 let's see if we are able to find the span id inside the logs or not so i'm going to open the logs of the inventory service i'm going to search for 755 and you can see that the, the span id visible is visible here right and uh, here we have the trace ID which starts with 2ACE. Let's see whether this is the same trace ID we see in the Zipkin UI or not. So, and you can see that the trace ID here is starting with 2ACE. And similarly for the order service, the span ID starts with AF82F. And let's go to the order service. And you can see that the span ID is also the same here, right? So when we are making a call in a single thread, without any creating additional threads we can trace the request from start to the end but if you are trying to create an additional thread on top of uh, the uh, an additional thread then this is not really useful right you need to create your own spans for that right so let's see how to create our own span to uh, be able to understand this information right so let's try to enable this uh, circuit breaker one more time so i'm going to go inside the place order method of the order service and uh, spring cloud sleuth provide us provides us a, 
a mechanism to actually create our own span IDs here, right? So we can do that by using the tracer class from Spring Cloud Sleuth. So I'm going to type in private final tracer, which is actually coming from the Spring Cloud Sleuth. So, so I'm going to make use of this tracer reference variable and just before making a call to the inventory service I'm going to type tracer dot next span dot name we are going to provide a unique name to this particular span we are going to create right so I'm going to call this as inventory service lookup and uh, let's store this re uh, written variable inside a local variable called as inventory service lookup so just before the call to the inventory service i'm going to type tracer dot with span and here i'm going to provide the span as inventory lookup service lookup dot start right and what this will do is it will execute the whole code uh, first i have to assign this inside a try finally block and I'm going to inside the finally block I'm going to type inventory service lookup dot end and I'm going to move all the code below this into this try with resources block let's uh, format this so that it looks nice so let's assign this particular with span call to uh, another reference variable called as tracer dot span span in scope and let let's call this variable as a span in scope and that's it so we have to execute the whole block of code inside this try with resources uh, block so what will happen is spring cloud sleuth will assign this particular span id which we have created in the previous step to this particular piece of code which is executed inside this block okay so let's restart our order service so after you have restarted the order service let's go back to the postman client and make sure to acquire a new access token before you place the order so after getting a new access token click on the send button and you can see that your the order is placed successfully let's go back to zipkin and click on run query and under the api gateway row i'm going to click on the show button and you can see that we have as we have created the as we have added back the logic to for the circuit breaker we cannot see the inventory service here anymore so let's go back to find trace and run query one more time and i'm going to select the order service and click on the show button now you can see that we have already we can already see the span id we have created called as inventory service lookup so in this way we can create our own span ids if you want to trace this uh, trace any particular piece of code you can create your own spans manually and um, and assign that particular span id to whatever logic uh, you want to execute so that's it for this video in the next video we are going to have a look at how to implement event driven architecture in our microservice system we are going to make use of the kafka message queue to implement the event driven microservice event driven architecture so i will see in the next video and until then happy coding techies